Hello tacticians, I am Nicholas, game designer at NetEase. We are together today once again to discuss The Lord of the Rings Rise to War. So in our game, the territory expansion aspect of the gameplay is really important. So we talked about tiles before. We have different tiles. We have tiles that can provide resources, of course, uh, with which you can upgrade your city or uh, recruit more troops. Uh, but there will also be different types of tiles. For example, some that will unlock new unit types that would otherwise be not available to you. Uh, some tiles are also called, for example, uh, harbors or uh, tunnels. And with those, you, can, you will be able to uh, access the other side of it um, after you capture them. Um, and then, last but not least, you also have tiles that are called control points. Control points are basically cities um, that you can capture. And if you capture them, uh, your faction will capture the whole region that they are part of. So one of the other main features of our game is that we have seasons. Uh, one season lasts about two to three months, and at the end of it, players will be rewarded, uh, depending on how much they contributed to their faction goals. Uh, with every season endings, there will be some things that will be reset. Uh, so the game map will be reset, which includes, for example, uh, the tasks that players captured, uh, the region that they captured, this kind of thing. Um, and the uh, player city's progression will also be reset. But players will keep their commanders, every commander that they recruited, as well as the equipment that they received. Um, we hope by uh, using this kind of uh, season system to introduce new gameplay uh, with every, se every new season. Uh, another aspect to consider is that, for example, if some players were not doing so well in the previous seasons, they can have another chance uh, with the next season. So it's also a, a very uh, interesting opportunity for those players. At the start of every season, players will be able to pick a faction. With every faction comes a unique unit that only this faction can use. So they will have to choose wisely depending on this, but also depending on who is playing, because um, players can also create or join alliances in this faction, in the faction that they previously chose. Uh, alliances, what we call fellowship or wire bands, uh, can provide players with more resources uh, and also access to the alliance shop. And last but not least, there is also a special feature called War Declaration that players will have to use wisely because it's, um, it's a feature that allows players of one fellowship to attack a region uh, controlled by another faction without any penalty. So it's something very powerful that alliances will have to use wisely. Um, your faction can be either on the good side or the evil side. This means that commanders can either be on the good side or evil side. There is no commander that will be exclusive to one specific faction. So it means that if you're, for example, Mordor, you can still recruit Saruman. If you are uh, Rohan, uh, you can still recruit Aaron and, and Arwen, for example. Uh, from the later seasons. So if you chose uh, a good faction and you have already some uh, good commanders and next season you choose an evil faction, you will still be able to keep and use the good commanders that you already have recruited. Uh, for units, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, you have access to all the units, most of the units from your side, from your faction side. Uh, if you are a mortal, you can still recruit the uruk -hai of Isengard. So there will still be uh, a unique unit that will be exclusive to every faction. So uh, one thing that you will never be able to uh, get is the unique unit of the other faction. So you still have to think carefully about which faction you need to choose. As always, thank you for your interest in Leather Rings Rise to War. Keep an eye on social media, but more importantly, war is upon us now. See you in game.